One of my best hacks for seasonal decor that is beautiful and also affordable is using printable art. You can easily print it out on your printer, pop it in a frame, and you've got something you can switch out from season to season that didn't cost you much at all. So today I am sharing my best tips and tricks for designing your own printable art in Canva to go from a blank canvas to a beautiful work of art you can frame like this. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIYs, budget home decor, a ton of tips and tricks to get a home that you love on a budget. Today I am also tapping into my digital design and marketing background to share with you the best tips and tricks that I have learned along the way when using Canva. Now last year I did a full tutorial. I shared a ton of tips and tricks but today we're going to focus on printables because that is the highly requested thing that you guys want to see me do. So without further ado let's get into it. So to get started, you will need a Canva account if you don't have one already, and it is free to start. Now Canva has different tiers, and so I pay for the pro plan. So as I'm going through, you will probably see that there are different graphics and fonts that I'm using that are part of the pro plan. I firmly believe in it. I love Canva and I use it for everything, but you can definitely find some great options on Canva with the free version. Just keep that in mind as we're going through. So once you log in, you'll be able to see on the left hand side all of your different things with your account. You can select from a variety of different templates and then you can also create a custom design. So I'm going to do an 8x10. You can do pixels, inches, millimeters, or centimeters as your measurement. I just like to do 8x10. It helps with the conversion when you're going to print it out. So once you do that, it's going to give you a new tab with your blank canvas to work on and over here on the left it's going to populate you a ton of templates right off the bat so if you don't want to start fully from scratch you can pick one of these they've got a ton of great ones like here you can do a calendar they've got different things like creating your own memo this is great for teachers so the templates are awesome to get started especially if you don't have a background in design or don't really want to start from scratch you can easily make some beautiful quote artwork with just switching out the text so don't count that out Today I am going to show you how I go from scratch to my project, so let's get into that. I'm going to delete everything off here and start fresh. So now that I've got my blank canvas, we are going to start by selecting some elements. So today we're going to make a Valentine's Day kind of bucket list checklist, and I've done these for both fall and Christmas. And so I had a subscriber ask if I could do it for Valentine's Day, and I thought this would be a perfect time to show you. So I'm gonna go over here to the left and select elements, and then we're gonna start searching. So my key is to use the word watercolor to get the images that I want. I'm gonna search for Valentine's Day watercolors and make sure that that word's in there. You can also do watercolor illustrations, watercolor pictures, watercolor with whatever. Then I'm gonna to toggle over to the graphics tab. So that gives me all of the illustrations that I'm looking for. It's going to take out all of the photos, videos, audio, so I don't have to mess with that. If you click all, it's gonna give you all of the search results. So now I'm just gonna go through and find some different elements that I think would fit within a Valentine's Day bucket list. So I'm thinking like sending Valentines and making heart-shaped treats and self-care and having coffee with friends and so I'm gonna go through and just find images that I like and I'm gonna click to add them to my 8x10 little canvas here as I'm adding them I'm just using the little white dots in the corner to size them so then that way I can kind of figure out how many I need to fill my sheet so the next step is to just go through and pick the ones that I like. This can be a little bit tedious. Even if I remotely like something, I'm gonna click it and add it to the canvas because you can always delete it. You can also click the three dots up in the corner and star it and that will save it to your elements as well. Now that I've got a good amount of elements on my page, I'm gonna start resizing and moving them around. I like to use the larger items in the corners to anchor it. And then I also wanted to use this large envelope with the paper popping out as kind of the title that says like Valentine's Day checklist or bucket list or activities. So I started by putting a rose in the center and then moved everything around. You'll see in a second, I'm gonna switch it to that heart because I liked it better. 
But here the goal is to have everything be in its own spot, but try to puzzle piece it together so they look like they are supposed to be there. So for example, I am kind of getting everything to where I want it and you want it to look like it was meant to be there. And this is kind of one of those like not hard and fast rule. You kind of have to massage it out. So I will move stuff, add stuff, change stuff. You can also go up to position and say that you want something to be moved in front of or behind something else to kind of get that layering effect. But here's where, you know, I'm looking to say, okay, does this item fit? Is the coloring correct? And here there were a couple items that just weren't working for me. So I had to go back to the elements and find some other things that I wanted. And that is okay. You are not going to create something and knock it out of the park on the first round. If you do, kudos to you, but it's more going to be the process of finding what you like and working through it to get it where you want it. It's the same as doing a DIY or drawing something or sculpting. It takes a few times, it takes some practice, but you will get it. Another trick I like to do is grouping items. So here I'm going to do the suckers, these little cookies, as well as the little box of heart-shaped cookies. So then that way it's like all heart-shaped treats together. That also helps and is a fun design element. Once I have everything kind of where I think it should go, then I am going to go to the left and add two different pieces of text. The reason I'm doing two different kinds of text is because I want two different fonts. So in the first one, I'm going to use this Lumine typewriter, and this is just in my recent fonts. The little crown is going to denote that it is a pro font, so that's something that if you have the pro account, you can use for free. If not, you can upgrade to it or just find a different font. So that is always an option. And then for my second one, I tried a few different script fonts. You can type calligraphy or handwriting up in the box to kind of find a font that you like. And I ended up going with Sacramento. So I've got the Luminos typewriter and also the Sacramento for the script font. Now, as I'm working through it, the goal here when I'm laying out those two fonts is to kind of make it look like they work together. So as I'm zooming in here, I'm kind of moving it around so that like that F could fit in between enjoy coffee. Then that way it kind of looks like it was all designed together and that gives you a little bit more of a topography look. So I'm messing with that until I like it and then I'm going to copy both of those and work my way around to all of the different items. So I've got create a DIY project. And then here I'm working on the heart shaped treats. And you can also play with different size fonts. So here enjoy is going to be bigger and heart shaped treats is going to be smaller instead of the typewriter text being bigger or smaller. And as I work too with my text, I'm moving things around, resizing. The goal here is to make it not look cluttered, but make it look full. So only have a couple things overlapping and really just kind of mess with sizing. When I first started doing these, it helped to look at other printables to kind of see what they looked like. So just search free printables, check them out, see what's out there. And then that can also help you with your design and your inspiration. Also, don't be afraid to use the little tilt. So that's the little circle arrow. You can tilt things to the side. That adds a little bit more whimsy and it just makes it fun. Something I like to do to finish off the whole look is putting a swatch behind my design. So here I'm going to search watercolor and I actually needed to say like watercolor paint. So I did that and I found this really pretty pink circle. So I took it over and put it behind my design. So you're just going to do that by clicking position and you want to stretch it to make sure it's as big as your design or even bigger. Then we're going to go up to our little checkerboard icon and pull it down to transparency of 25. That's going to give it a really washed out, really muted look, and it's going to be great to help everything kind of look cohesive and pop. 
Now I made some last minute tweaks and then I decided that it would help if one of the fonts were a different color. So I decided to go through and make all of the Sacramento script fonts a red color. Now the cool thing with Canva is it will pick colors from your design. So I just chose a red from my little sucker. I clicked all of them and just switched the font color just like you would in any other program. It's really user friendly. Then my last step was to do Valentine's checklist. So I decided to swap and do Valentine's Day in a script and checklist in the typewriter font. I went through a few different ones and ended up deciding back on the Caitlin font. Then my last thing was to change checklist over to activities because it didn't really feel like a checklist just because there weren't really any boxes. And it is all done. Now you can go up to the right hand corner and click share. There's a variety of different ways to share. I just like to share it as a JPEG. So then that way when you go to print it, it will be the right size, but you can also do a PDF, whatever floats your boat. Then say you want to take this art and do it in a different size. You can easily click resize and say I wanted to do a five by seven. Then I can select everything and kind of reposition it. Because the aspect ratio is a little off, you're gonna have to kind of move your elements, but you can make it whatever size. You could also do eight and a half by 11 if you wanna do it on a full sheet of printer paper. Say you're a teacher and you wanna put it on a bulletin board or you wanna put it on a clipboard and you wanna do the full sheet, this is how you would do that. The best part about making these is you can truly be creative. I love the watercolor motif, but you could do whatever you want. There are a ton of different options in Canva. I'll also link some sites down below that I like to check out for elements in case you don't wanna do Canva Pro or you do have Canva and you want some other elements beyond what Canva offers. Also be sure to check out my website for a ton more free printables if you would rather just use mine because that's something you can absolutely do as well. This file will be available over on my blog as well if you would like to use this for your Valentine's Day decor. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video answered your questions when it comes to printables in Canva. If you've got more questions, leave me a comment down below because I would love to do more Canva tutorials. I use that platform for all of the things within my business so I could share both DIY as well as other digital design tips and tricks if you guys want to see them. Thanks again for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!